Achieve real results for your clients with the help of the new Truth360 app, brought to you by Truth Treatment Systems. The Truth360 app makes client at-home care recommendations easy and features a customizable storefront to make at-home care recommendations and purchases simple. No big opening orders required. Plus, get access to advanced skincare education developed by Benjamin Knight Fuchs, professional discounts on products, and earned up to 30% commission on all products sold through your Truth360 app storefront. Visit truthtreatmentspro.com or download the Truth360 app from your phone's app store. ASCP members, log on to ASCPSkincare.com now to access your limited time discount code. You are listening to ASCP SC Talk, where we share insider tips, industry resources, and education for estheticians at every stage of the journey. Let's talk, because ASCP knows it's all about you. Hello, and welcome to ASCP SC Talk. I am Ella Cressman, licensed esthetician, certified organic skincare formulator, and content contributor for Associated Skincare Professionals. I am Maggie Stasek, licensed esthetician and ASCP's cosmetology education manager. Hi, guys, and I'm Tracy Donnelly, executive director of Associated Skincare Professionals, and I'm super excited again to be sitting here with these lovely ladies and just chiming in where necessary. Well, you guys, today's topic might need some comic relief because okay. some of these are laughable in my opinion. Now you guys know that I'm a researcher. That's no secret. And I'm always, let's call it actively observant of what's going on in the industry. Also known as like I'm online all the time. <laughs> I'm looking, You're the eye in the sky. I'm always looking. I'm always seeing what is happening because I want to understand not just in the professional arena, but also in the direct to consumer market, the over the counter, whatever you want to refer to it as. I want to know what people are saying. I want to know what ingredients people are talking about. I want to know what procedures are garnering interest. And then on top of that, I want to know what advice are people giving. You are a curious little lady. I am. So, <laughs> some people call it a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie's laughing so hard because she knows it's true. <laughs> so what I've noticed is there's a few common threads, right? There are some helpful facts and there are other crazy inaccuracies. And I thought that in today's episode, what we should talk about is some of, I mean, trust me, there's plenty, but let's talk about three skincare myths that seem to me to run abundant online. Yay. Are we going to play a game? Yes. Yes. And I want to start out with a quote. And this quote comes from Sophocles, who is a ancient Greek, very smart person. <laughs> he says, no enemy is worse than bad advice. What do you guys think about that? Oh, it's yeah. true. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. You can really jack your world up if you take some bad advice. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think back 20 years ago, the advice that we would seek person to person, interpersonal advice, right? Mm -hmm. And now we trust the advice of strangers. So if we're on- Faceless strangers. Faceless strangers and and unqualified, I would mm, say. So true. Right? So just a quick Google search. I mean, you hear that with medical too, like Dr. Google, <laughs> like mm -hmm. WebMD. Everything. Like, Ooh, I've got this. Oh, no. <laughs> Everything's coming up cancer yeah. when it could just be yeah. a cough. And I've done that at the doctor's office. Like, I'm pretty sure this is what I have. And they're like, I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think what people are really good at is Googling for the answer they want to hear. Ooh, that's important. Ooh, that's yes, Maggie. Keep on searching mm -hmm. until you get what you want. Yeah. And I think that's mm. possible. Absolutely. So the first thing I think we should talk about, let's do a little truth, um, true or false, okay? Yay. So I'm going to ask a question and you guys, I'm going to count to three and you say truth or false or true or false, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? An online quiz is a good way to help satisfy your skincare needs. One, two, three. False. False. Yes. Nice. Okay, you both Unanimous. agree on that. <laughs> yeah. But I love online quizzes, and it does satisfy something. It scratches the niche. It does. Yeah. Okay, so there's two things I want to point out. Let's hear more from you, Maggie. Tell me that, that itch. What, is, what does that mean? 
I'm not really sure what the itch is, but I think, <laughs> you know, they're really interesting. You know, you type in the information, whatever it's asking for, like, are you oily all day long, for instance, yes or no? And you get an outcome. Maybe it's like a certain skincare regimen, or maybe it's diagnosing you in some way. And I think it's very curious and interesting. And I sometimes find myself going back and altering my answers, whether they're <laughs> true or not, to see if I get a different outcome. And sometimes not, which means the quiz mm. is not very oh, accurate. It's fixed. Yeah, it, it's it fixed, is yeah. fixed. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I just. It, it, yeah, it is satisfying some weird itch. Do you I, think that goes to what you said about Google searching for what you want, the outcome you want? Yeah, probably. I think the itch that it's satisfying is that we all, we just want things to be personalized. We want to know more and more about ourselves all the time as just human beings. I mean, you know, how many of those standardized personality quizzes can you take? I mean, oh, you're a born leader. You're an influencer. Oh, you're emotional. Oh, you're sensitive. You know, like, I mean, you just want to know. I think it applies to everything. Except for the one of like, are you a narcissist? <laughs> oh, I never take that quiz. Ella. <laughs> I saw that recently. as an not falling for that one. Oh, really? <laughs> Maybe I should take it. Yeah. <laughs> So I find it interesting for a couple of reasons. I was working with a brand probably about a year and a half ago, and we were developing their website. We had their product development on point. Uh, formulations were great. So now we were doing messaging. So I said, great. <clears throat> What's the basis of your quiz? And I'm an esthetician. I've got a very critical eye. And that's one thing I did on their website was I was like, this is not correct. This is not correct. <laughs> like, and all like removing all claims and I had done a full audit. So, uh, that was all on point. And now she was adamant she wanted this test. She's like, I don't know. I just found it. People like it. I said, okay, let me take your test. And there was nothing to back it up. So the I answered answer that you received after taking the quiz? There was nothing connecting it to this brand mm. other than this oh. widget of sorts. Mm -hmm. There was no science behind it. Mm -hmm. So Even in the outcome? The whole thing from start to finish, wow. it mm -hmm. wasn't related to the products that right. they had. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was like... Um, random quiz, let's insert this as a plugin in the back end of my website, it had nothing to do with the products that they had. And I thought, oh, I'm skeptical. So yesterday I take this online quiz for myself and I and they ask all these questions like if and it was cute, right? To your point, like I see online quizzes. It was quizzes worded are like fun. all kitschy and yeah. fun. I yeah, and I love that. <laughs> and fun questions and a little bit of undertone of snark. I'm like, oh, you're funny. You <laughs> I know? love that. And yeah. it comes up with the questions they asked were, how old are you? <laughs> maybe it just hit me. Maybe that's why they got to this answer. Oh, <laughs> how old are you? What, you know, do you tan easy? What are you looking for in a product? And it came up with my result is normal skin with sensitive concerns. Interesting. Interesting. Your skin type would be considered normal. You're rarely, you rarely experience breakouts, have small pores along the T-zone, and typically experience a light, a slight oily shine at the end of the day. A general approach is always best, particularly for normal skin types who generally do not suffer excessive dryness or oil. It didn't ask me anything about sensitivity. Yeah. Like in the question. Yeah, no, I believe that. So how did they get to this assumption? Where was this determined Well, from? was it driving their sales? I mean, their, their marketing for their product? I mean, is it all about sensitive skin? No, they have mm -hmm. a full line. This particular website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this particular one has a bunch of different brands. Huh. Okay. And so there and were, I mean, that would make sense. Generally, though, these quizzes are for the consumer that has no clue, right? Mm -hmm. They need some direction. And I think we can all agree that consumerism is now so all about online. You don't go into the shop. You don't meet with anybody, right? People want to do everything online. So if you have a little quiz that goes with your product, even if it's totally non-related, it's giving an outcome to somebody who can then say, perfect, this is exactly what I'm supposed to buy, right? Well, the craziest part, that's so scary. And I'm sure if I know well of, we're probably going this direction. But so now all of a sudden, depending on the consumer, they're going to hang their hat on that. And everywhere yeah. they go, everything they buy, everyone they talk to, they're going to go, oh, I have sensitive skin and I have very small pores in the T-zone. And I just want you to know that because everyone wants to feel yeah. like so empowered and knowledgeable. You and know? normal skin with sensitive concerns. And I could see, yeah. and I do see that, right? If, as they come into the shop, they like a first time consultation is I have normal skin with sensitive concerns. I, I can't do retinols. I can't do peels. <laughs> yeah. But they're, see, they're taking it even to the next level, 
right? And a consumer would, because they don't really know about the retinols, about the whatever, you know, they're just going, yeah, I've heard other information over here that if you have sensitive skin that you shouldn't use retinol. Oh, well, let's tie that into oh. our next little myth. Okay. <laughs> so now what I hear you saying, okay. all of a sudden, now they're an expert on their own skin. Heck yeah. Right? I hear yeah. that. Okay, you guys, now I have the next question for you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to ask the question on the count of three. You say true or false, okay? Online forums are great places for skincare advice, both as a consumer and as a professional. One, two, three. True, true. and false. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I do agree with Maggie. It is probably true and false. True but and false. I lean towards true. If you know how to sort through the, like, you can't take every single thing that every person says as Bible, you know? Yeah. Hey, guys, stop. Let's take a quick break. Ellie Bana, Australian born, globally loved. Ellie Bana's story is simple. They love lashes and brows. They shoot for the stars and lift lashes to new heights. Their addiction is real, their passion is popping, and there is nothing more they crave than offering excellence, service, and innovation in products. Elibana Lash Lift allows you to offer your customers luscious, lifted lashes that can last up to 12 weeks in one safe 20-minute treatment. Learn more at elibana-usa.com. Let's get back to the conversation. I think that a lot of people do. And so what what drew this what drew this question out was I was recently on Reddit. Have you guys do you guys spend oh, much time that's on a, Reddit? <laughs> you yeah. can go down a rabbit hole there. And it is. <laughs> and there is this um group, it's like skincare concerns or like I have questions about my skin. There's a bunch of different groups, but one of them I was like jaw on the floor with the advice. I was so upset. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. I'm on the edge. Tell me what the advice was. You name it. There was one that says, oh, this this client had little bumps on their forehead, which would be like closed comedones, like obviously a moisture imbalance, in my opinion, hydration issue that we would have to examine. Not an inflamed anything, no, no like ready to pop situation at all. And some of the advice was, oh, get the pimple patches. Interesting. For a bunch of bumps. Bumps. That'll oh, heal no. it overnight. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> the salicylic acid patches, that wouldn't help. No, I mean, in fact, it would make it worse, worse potentially. Yeah. And then there is another one about hyperpigmentation. And this was the, the, the poster was about hyperpigmentation, but it was really a darkening around the poster's neck, Ooh. the original poster's neck. Well, here's the thing. That is such a slippery slope because it could be an underlying condition related to insulin, whether it's PCOS or you know, precursor to diabetes, right? Way out of our scope. Mm -hmm. Well, these people were like, oh, have you tried this acid and wash oh with, my. what about lemon oil? And, and they weren't even looked, seeing pictures of our skin or anything this, like that? No, the pictures oh, were on They there. were, okay. Unqualified people giving right. this advice. Uh -huh. No health intake there. <laughs> no questions or anything. Or with acne, what could be happening? Or with sensitive skin in particular was like, that's horrible. That is horrible advice. You know, you know what you should put? Oh, your skin is red and inflamed and flaky. I use retinol from, you know, a I just, layer I or mean, something. I don't know. I, if I, I don't know, maybe the general consumer would go to um, something like Reddit or you know, I just would hope that uh, a consumer would pop into something that is specifically driven by professionals. You would hope. Would like hope. like yeah. WebMD, right? Like, that is, you know that those are doctors. I don't know that that's built other than in these Facebook groups or yeah. such or like these social media groups. And then maybe they can't get into the social media groups if they're not a professional. professional. Ooh, yeah. snap. I think there's a business opportunity, ladies. Well, I think <laughs> that, that there is a company out there that has that. It's like run by estheticians to give advice. So I'm curious to watch how they grow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I'll tell you guys after the podcast, mm. okay. <laughs> before we plug them, let's <laughs> do some more research. Okay. I like it. But when you look at also like professional to professional posts, you see things like, you guys, I have this client and this is what he is presenting with acne, let's say. Like acne is a really common one. And you see all kinds of supplement advice. Mm -hmm. They should be on zinc. They should be um, tried not to do this. They should do this. 
and they should try this for skincare. Here's the peels they should try. Oh, try these procedures. What's the flaw with that? Well, I would. I want to recommend. They, ha- they haven't seen the skin. Number one, they don't know the client. Number two, this is where I think that estheticians are failing to educate themselves. And I know that I've said this before. Everyone thinks they are the expert, and they want to share their knowledge, but. Ella, I think you can agree with me that when it comes to aesthetics, there is a different approach for the same condition every time. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different philosophy, and that also can be an error, so to speak, you know? Um, Even just like with little bumps across the forehead, each esthetician is going to have a different view about what's causing that and ways to treat that, Mm -hmm. you know? And so for an esthetician to go to a forum, even if it is all professionals, they're going to get bad advice guaranteed every time. And it's also, I 100% agree with you. And I wanted to just mention before we get too far off of it, you mentioned supplements that estheticians are mentioning, supplements and and diet and things. I think you can talk about the diets, but when you start getting into the supplements, realize that that is out of scope Mm -hmm. in many, many states. And if something were to happen, I know we talk about insurance and all that stuff. If something were to happen as it's relative to supplements, you wouldn't be covered because that's out of your scope. So yes, you can sell retail products. And they may happen to be supplements, but that would fall under your business license. There's somebody uh, recently, this sweet person posted, and she posted her business card. And she said, my mother and my mother-in-law both think I need to change it. It said, you know, Jane Doe, um, it was holistic esthetician. Should I keep this or not? You know, and that was the question. Mm -hmm. It was because she was holistically minded. And there's two inferences with holistic, holistic being inference I had when I was growing up, and this is the health food store and the people who eat carob chips and, (laughs) you know, Big Sky Soda versus somebody holistic meaning the whole person. So there's one side. And the other part was she was saying that she does look at all those factors when with her consultations and she wants somehow to reflect that. So you go and you look in the comments and I watched closely because I commented, I said, you know, my comment was, what does your state license say? Because I feel that that is what you should put on your business cards just to avoid any kind of issues. Yeah. I mean, you could name your business something like yeah. holistic skincare, yeah. you know, or holistic spa or what have you. But yeah, I think you should never make up a, a title. Not unless there's an accreditation for that specifically. Right. And there's not yes. right now. Mm-hmm. So, um, but in there, what they were talking about, this one comment, it was like, oh, wow, it's crazy. And I wish I had it verbatim, but let me just tell you the gist. <laughs> okay. Basically, she was in school and her instructor was very holistic minded. And so she gave her advice to get off of spirulactone. (laughs) Spironolactone. Oh my gosh, I can't even say it. (laughs) She told her, you should get off your spironolactone for your acne. It's very commonly prescribed for that, but it's actually um, an adrenal suppressant. Ooh. So it helps regulate a bunch of other things. So she got off of it. She was on it, not just for her acne, but for her blood pressure. Her blood pressure went up and a host of other problems. Oh, my. And so there's a great, perfect well example. intended, yeah. as it were, but a perfect example of why we need to stay in our lane. That's one thing that can happen with these things is that, to Maggie's point, you really don't know the whole story, what's going on and, and such. So that's what's wrong with this advice. But let's talk about what's right with that kind of advice. Okay, that sounds fun. Yeah. So that I agree with both of you that it is true and false. So what's right with this advice is that, hey, somebody's seeking out advice, right? Yeah, they're looking for consultation. That's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's a great way to bounce ideas and not look at it so much as you're gaining advice, but you should already have an idea in your mind of whatever you're looking for. If it's a way to treat your client, um, hopefully you already have that base knowledge and an understanding and just say, I'm thinking about this versus this. What are your guys' ideas? And have an open mind and knowing that not everybody is an expert, but just getting some feedback, just collaborating, bouncing those ideas. I I think you're spot on with that point because, I mean, a lot of times, you know, a solo esthetician, he or she may be working in a treatment room all by themselves in a suite and not have any colleagues to bounce things off of. So, you know, you are going to have to go out there and 
and look for that. You can't just be operating in a bubble. And take it with a grain of salt. Understand that that influence of the advice may come from the product lines that they use, may come from their experience, not to mention the part of the country that they're in, the training that they have, right? We have master's programs in Utah and Washington, which is way different than the requirements in other parts of the state. So they can do more or the humidity climate is different. So keep that in mind. The other thing uh, to think about is as a consumer, when you're asking advice on these things like Reddit or any other place where any ad ob observer can jump in and give advice is that buying all these suggested products from untrained professionals can cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So you may be like, I can't afford. There was one post that says, I can't afford sunscreen anymore. Sad. Whoa. I can't afford sunscreen right now. Does anybody have any suggestions? Well, there is this suggestion and that suggestion. And if you were to try all those things, that would be a lot of money. Like put all together, it would be $40 worth of a good quality sunscreen, right? But the advice was given at TJ Maxx, they have some for $5. And I was like, oh, I'm looking away. And it could be expired <laughs> and it might not work at all. Close this window. <laughs> I can't. So, um, and the other thing is then who do you trust with your skincare needs? Is it a professional or um, perceivable peers? So that's all, leaving that little nugget. Speaking of, let's ask question number three. Ready for this one? Yes. Ready? Okay. You see a lot of these posts, especially in the professional realms. I did my research. I did all this research, and my research leads me to believe this. Okay. So this question is, online research is as easy as a Google search. One, two, three. True. True. False. Both. <laughs> <laughs> If everyone can see us right now, we're all looking at each other, exchanging views like, oh, what? Okay. True and false. Okay. Because it depends yeah. on what you're looking at. And that's mm -hmm. the point, right? Yeah. Hyalur Hyaluronic acid, I can't say it now, <laughs> I'm saying it that way, <laughs> uh, is one great one. You hear a lot of chatter about high molecular weight versus low molecular weight. And it's like two different camps. It's almost like a political argument at this point. <laughs> Are they going to get canceled? Better, which one's worse? And that's because, in, t in my opinion... Because of my research, <laughs> a 2016 article was published in a medical journal that talked about the way that you could track the permeability of different weights of hyaluronic acid. And that based on this very generic description, low molecular weight was able to penetrate through where high molecular weight stayed on the top of. And that absolutely could be true. But there's all these other studies that say otherwise. So to Maggie's point of Googling what you want to find out, yes. And the other thing is someone asked a question and then posted their research, and it was an article from a brand, which is normal, right? Some of these brands have very... Um, they have ro robust information and, and very well written, and so some of it is very valuable. But, but bias. But bias. Yeah, exactly. bias. Yeah. So being careful what you're looking at. What side are you on? Are you looking at an article or a scientific article? A lot of times companies or articles or blog posts will cite the research. Know, study. Yeah. They'll either use a hyperlink or they'll they cite have it like to. a research paper. So check that out too. And I would just say in that same vein, and if you're really looking for ingredient information, um, then you should just uh, make sure you're a member and be a getting on ASCP Skin Pro. And because um, also too, that uh, detail and information is cited and well-researched. So you know that it's coming from the goods. Yes. I think also too, it's okay to do some research. Here's another one that I saw. I was told CBD is dangerous. That's sad. It's sad. And so no other context, nothing else. And this was commented on... Um, a thread about a certain condition and people were giving advice, have you tried CBD for this? And someone said, literally, I was told CBD is dangerous. No evidence to back it up, but that ensued another thread. What do you mean? How did you hear this? I found the source of that. And it was someone who was talking about microneedling with a CBD serum. And that's what they were talking about, granulomas and such. But no, again, no evidence to back it up. So just keep in mind that ask for that in a nice way. You don't have to be like, prove it. But <laughs> or you, you could. Say, Do you mind sharing that source with me? Yeah. That's very curious. I've never heard that before. Do you mind sharing? You know, because honestly, not everyone commenting is the only people reading. There's people out there like myself <laughs> who are just, just creeping. Creeping. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, listeners, we really want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on internet advice? What do you think of self-proclaimed experts giving skincare advice without training? Have you ever dished out advice without knowing the full story? And how do you go about giving advice without a full consultation? Let us know. Reach out on our social media platforms, especially Instagram and Facebook, or by emailing getconnected at ASCPSkincare.com. We want to know all the details. In the meantime, thank you for listening to ASCP SC Talk. For more information on this episode or ways to connect with Maggie or myself or to learn more about ASCP, check out the show notes. And stay tuned for the next episode of ASCP SC Talk. Thanks for joining us today. If you like what you hear and you want more, subscribe. If you want to belong to the only all-inclusive association for estheticians that includes professional liability insurance, education, industry insights, and an opportunity to spotlight your six skills, join at ASCPSkincare.com. Only $2.59 per year for all this goodness. ASCP knows it's all about you.